Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 22nd day of January. And today's topic is titled, Round Up the Strays. And before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you, <clears throat> as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. And He can be your Lord and Savior today if you'll just humble yourself and repent and turn to God and believe on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and what he did on the cross and he'll wash away all your sin past, present, and future and give you eternal life and, and you can spend eternity with him in heavenly places and while we're on this earth in the meantime we're to go out and be a bold witness and tell somebody about Jesus today so amen uh, however you do it whether you're going to go door knocking or hold signs somewhere or go pass out gospel tracts or be a personal witness at work or and a um, family member, or amen. So, all right, so let's just get out there and tell somebody today <clears throat> that Jesus saves. Okay, we're going to start with today's scripture song, and this is from Ephesians 6 10 through 11, talking about the whole armor of God, and a uh, uh, good passage there talking about the whole armor of our God, right? How we're supposed to put it on, amen. So, there's the first uh, couple verses from that. So, here we go, we'll press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Finally, and my brethren, brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, put, put on, on the whole armor, armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. devil. Amen. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of of his might put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand stand against the wiles of the devil my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, stand against the wiles of the devil, stand against the wiles of the devil, stand against the wiles of the devil. Of the devil. Amen. Alright, so we'll put that back to yesterday's, and uh... Do those again towards the end of the broadcast, but first, before we get into the topic, I want to read you about the whole armor of God really quick, and I uh, also recommend uh, Brother James's uh, sermons on the whole armor of God, which was from his uh, Ephesians series way back in 2011, when I first started coming to, or going to Bible Baptist, so praise the Lord for those uh, messages, so I encourage you to check those out, you can do so by going to www jameswnox.org and tend to the um, uh, website store and order those uh, through the website and uh, maybe even order them through mp3 format so <clears throat> amen good series there on the whole armor of god all right so let me get to ephesians and then read you this from chapter six and starting in verse 10 again again it says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So, we're to put on the whole armor of God, so that means you put it on, you can take it off. And don't recommend doing that. Making sure you keep it on at all times, and uh, all of it. And that's uh, Lord Jesus Christ. He is the uh, whole armor. Amen. So, uh, verse 12 says, um, For we wrestle uh, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So, he basically tells us to stand, and then the Lord does the fighting for us. Amen. So, verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, right here, the word of God, praying always without, or excuse me, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that there uh, in I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. Amen. And in verse 22, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye might know your might, might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts peace be to the brethren and love and love with faith from god the father and the lord jesus christ grace be with all them that love our lord jesus christ in uh, sincerity amen so there you have it the rest of the chapter there and the whole armor of god and that would be jesus christ amen all right, so now we'll go ahead and get into the topic here for Sunday, January 22nd, titled Round Up the Strays. And we have here in Luke 14, 23b, it says, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Luke 14, 23b. It's funny how this uh, passage keeps coming up today uh, throughout the sermons this morning both by brother justin and then brother james talking about this uh these passages here and uh so i encourage you to go listen to those two messages by brother justin during the sunday school hour and then uh brother james uh mentioned it a little bit in the um regular church service hour so amen when he went through the book of micah talking about um uh inflation so check that sermon out both of those and really good stuff and uh amen Okay, so today's author is Brother Guy Goodall, and he is, hold on a second, let me get there. So Brother Guy Goodall, and where are you? All right, so he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. So looks like they changed it back to the original name, because <laughs> uh, in the last uh, devotional they, they had a different name for it. But it was originally Bible Baptist Church, but then there was a different name. But now it looks like it's back to the same name again. So I'm not sure what happened there, but amen. And so pray for Brother uh, Goodall because he's dealing with very serious uh, health issues is what uh, Brother Tim Green said in the beginning here from the word from the author or the editor. Amen. So pray for him. Okay, so let's get into this topic here titled Round Up the Strays. Uh, the principle applies to both soul winning and to the uh, re uh, reclamation of the wayward brothers and sisters in order to round up those who are spiritual strays we need to prepare so we got these uh four things here on how to prepare so first we need a burden for those who have gone astray it is not necessarily to sit around and wait for God to give you a burden, uh, one must voluntarily assume that burden. Second, we must make sure our own spiritual equipment is ready, right? So make sure that we're ready before we go out there and try to round up those because if we are not in the right state of mind and not uh, um, right and doing right, then we can't be going out and rounding up somebody that is uh, gone astray So because it might make you fall. So, amen. So, again, second, we must make sure our own spiritual equipment is ready. Uh, cowboys uh, checked everything before heading out for a roundup. Check your prayer life, your own faithfulness, your knowledge of the guidebook, and your support of the tra uh, tra uh, trail boss. Right? So, amen. And second, uh, third, remember that roundups are team efforts. Find your place, accept your responsibility, be faithful to your assignments, and avoid 
constant complaining about how tough it is. <laughs> right? So no complaining or murmuring. And then fourth, remember that the main point is the best interest of the strays. So fourth, remember the, that the main point is the best interest of the strays. The roundup is not a look at me activity. It is for the strays, our love for them, and the sacrifice made to bring them back to the corral. Right? Are you ready to saddle up? Or are you just sitting in the uh, bunkhouse polishing the saddle? Mm. Uh, I hear the trail boss calling for us to mount up. Amen. Our text was really the second plea to gather strays due, due to the excuse-making inviters um, who are inviters. I'm not sure how you say that. I-N-V-I-T-E-R, inviters, uh, who did nothing. So the master said to gather the poor, maimed, uh, halt, and blind. The faithful servant reported, Lord, it is done. And yet there is room, verse 22, amen, so there's always room for more to be saved, amen, praise the Lord. All right, so let's go ahead and read this passage here again, since it's been brought up so many times a day during the service hours, and now again in the devotional, so Luke 14, and let's look at this, and Luke 14, and let's see... 23, so where do we have to start here? Um, 14. I'm trying to see where we need to start here. Alright, so I guess we'll start in verse uh, um, uh, 15. So it says here in verse 15, And uh, when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many, so that's Jesus speaking, uh, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one accord, or assent, or consent, excuse me, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. So these are the first that are making excuses, talking about these different excuses, uh, why they can't come. Uh, the first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. <laughs> so the ground's always going to be there, as Brother Justin said this morning, and Brother James talking about the ground always being there, and it's not going anywhere, but it's just an excuse not to, to come and go to church and uh, be part of the fellowship or the supper for this instant, and uh, amen. So that was the first excuse. And then another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them, I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shewed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Amen. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. So, amen. All right. So that was the passage there again. Amen. All right, and I'll just go through these points here really quick about uh, rounding up the um, the strays here, the spiritual strays. Uh, so we need to prepare. And again, first, we need a burden for those who have gone astray. Second, we must make sure our own spiritual equipment is ready. Uh, third, remember that roundups are team efforts. And then fourth, remember that the main point is the best interest of the strays. Amen. So, are you ready to saddle up, or are you just sitting in the bunkhouse polishing the saddle? Uh, so, make sure we're ready to saddle up, and the trail boss is calling for us to mount up. And he says our text was really the second plea to gather strays, which is just read. And due to the excuse-making inviters, 
uh, who did nothing. Uh, so the master said to gather the poor, maimed, halt, and blind. And then the faithful servant reported, Lord, it is done, and yet there is room. Verse 22, so more room for people to get saved and trust in Jesus. Amen. So let's go out there and round up those strays, whether they be uh, saved people that have gone astray or lost people that need to be saved. Amen. Go out there and compel them to come in. All right, now it's time for the Daring Devotion topic for today. And this is from the book Daring Devotion, a missions devotional, a 31-day journey with those who li uh, lived God's promises, written by M.R. Conrad. And today is day 22, and it's titled Results. And this is about Mary Slessor, who was a missionary to Nigeria, 1848 to 1915. And she says, Christ sent me to preach the gospel, and he will look after the results. Amen. Mary Mary Slessor, missionary to Nigeria, 1848 to 1915. And then the passage from 1 Corinthians 3, 6 says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And that's Paul speaking. All right, so here we go. Run, Ma! The Nigerian women caring for the caring for the orphans shouted, rousing the Scottish missionary from her sleep. Already dressed and packed, Mary Slessor ran, not fleeing in terror from the inevitable conflict, but charging directly toward the rampaging warriors. This scene was often repeated during Slessor's time in the ok Okayong district of Nigeria. On one such occasion in 1890, Slessor's daring dash particularly concerned her friends, as if the long run through the African jungle were not danger enough. Mary knew that uh, knew she was headed toward a band of notoriously violent men, frenzied with alcohol and worked up for revenge. I have heard of no war, the chief of the village said when Mary arrived, breathless and spent. Uh, he did not want her to enter uh, fear. If there was a war, the chief declared, uh, they were not likely to be helped by a woman. Uh, in measuring the woman's power, she responded, You have evidently forgotten to take into account the woman's God. Mm. Uh, what audacity, what woman would dare to challenge tribal chiefs of Nigeria in such a fashion? The question, uh, who was this woman who would calmly uh, knit, at, uh, uh, knit as warriors uh, draped with weapons would argue and threaten each other for hours only to submit to her decision at the end of the conference? Uh, who was this woman who would oppose the centuries-old belief that twins were devils deserving death, snatching them from parents bent on murdering them? Who was this woman who rescued babies, defended battered women, and sheltered abused slaves, providing refuge in uh, her own mud hut from those who pursued them? In her nearly 50-year uh, ministry in the Calabar region of Nigeria, Mary Slessor would tame an entire district. She would be a driving force in changing a culture, a culture of violence to a culture of commerce. Her contributions to bringing peace to this tribal area of Nigeria would earn her accolades during her lifetime. After her death, her face would for a time, graced the ten-pound Scottish note. Who was this woman? An attendee at one of her meetings during a furlough in Scotland in 1898 described her. She was a most gentle-looking lady, rather below the average height, a complexion like yellow parchment and short, lank, brown hair, a most pleasing expression and a winning, winning smile, and when she spoke, I thought I heard I had never heard such a musical voice. Her biographer tells of her timid nature and how she was nervous to speak to a crowd of men in her home country. Uh, toward the end of her life, Mary wrote to a supporter, I have always said that I have no idea how or why God has carried me over so many funny and hard places, 
and made those, uh, these hordes of people submit to me, or why the government should have given me the privilege of a magistrate among them, except in answer to prayer made at home for me, it is all beyond my comprehension. The only way I can explain it is on the ground that I have been prayed for more than most. Pray on, dear one. The power lies that way. Amen. As she reportedly ran through the jungle to prevent bloodshed or rescue an infant, she would pray, she said, My one great consolation and rest is in prayer. I did not use uh, to believe uh, used to believe the story of Daniel in the lion's den until I had to take some of that awful uh, to take some of these awful marches and then I knew it was true and that it was written for my comfort many a time I walked alone praying oh god of Daniel shut their mouths and he did Slesser did not become this woman of faith overnight when she was a child her alcoholic father wasted the family's money after his death responsibility for providing for the family fell to her the oldest daughter by age 14 Slesser was working 10 hours per day in a textile factory she often balanced a book on top of her loom to read whenever she could uh, could during the uh, workday she read much about mission work in Africa then in 1874 David Livingstone's death inspired young Slesser to take the gospel to Africa amen after some training and arrangements for the care of her family 28 year old Slesser sailed for Nigeria on August 5, 1876. For 10 years, she served alongside veteran missionaries near the harbor, but the call of the unreached inland tribes tugged at her heart. During this time, she wrote, It is difficult to wait. Christ never was in a hurry. There was no rushing forward, no anticipating, no fretting over what might be. Every day's duties were done as every day brought them, and the rest was left with God. He that believeth shall not make haste. Uh, Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen. As Mary kept considering a move into the dangers of the untamed north, her mother assured her, You are my child, given to me by God, and I have given you back to him. When he needs you, and where he sends you, there I will have you be. Not long after this, God took her mother and younger sister home to heaven. Mary wrote, Heaven is not nearer to me than Britain, and no one will be anxious about me if I go up country. In 1888, uh, with permission from her mission board, she ventured into the realm of martyrs. Over the next 15 years, uh, despite her enormous social influence on the region, Mary Slesser struggled uh, with the lack of spiritual results. Many days were consumed with caring for the growing family of orphans she had rescued or beating back in the jungle around her hut. She wrote, So you see, life here, as at home, is just a record of small duties which occupy the time and task the strength uh, without much to show for it. With so many people needing help, she felt she had no choice. I must put my hands in wherever there is work to be done. In all her practical aid, she tried to share the life-giving message of the gospel, but few showed any sign of a believing response. Uh, yes, Ma, they would say, that is right for you, but you and we are different. But she never lost hope. There is not much progress to report, she was accustomed to say and yet very much to thank God for, and to lead us to take courage. It comes back to this. Christ sent me to preach the gospel, and he will look after results. In her letters, Slesser often repeated her burden to see genuine conversions among the people of Okayong. Uh, we have just kept on sowing the seed of the word, believing that when God's time comes to gather them into the visible kingdom, excuse me, the visible church, uh, there will be some among us ready to participate in the privilege and honor. 
Later, she wrote, I feel the smallness of the returns, but is the labor lost? A thousand times, no. In 1903, 15 years after moving north, tears filled her eyes as co-workers led the first communion service in the region. As the fledgling church grew, she encouraged the believers. Amen. Okay, young. Now looks to you more than to me for proof of the power of the gospel. Since she knew the result, or the results belonged to God, Slesser often emphasized her reliance on prayer. She wrote, Prayer can do anything. Let us try its power. Amen. So, power of prayer. In another letter, she affirmed, My life is one long daily hourly record of answered prayer. I can testify with a full and often wonder-stricken uh, awe that I believe God answers prayer. I know God answers prayer, she said. Amen. Uh, toward the end of her life, as accolades began to pile up and more churches sprang up in the region, Slesser attributed the results to God, writing, It isn't Mary Slesser doing anything, but something outside of her altogether uses her as her small ability allows. In another letter, she attested, If I have done anything in my life, it has been easy because the Master has gone before, responding to those who praised her work. Slesser asked uh, rhetorically, What would I do with uh, st starry crowns except to cast them at his feet? If God provides the results, then God should get the glory. Amen. So... That's what she said. So today, a uh, few are uh, pioneer missionaries venturing into trials by ordeal, slavery, and in uh, fat, fat, uh, fat Um However, every believer must look to God for fruit and lasting results from their labors. From the very first church planting efforts of the first century, God's power has grown uh, yeah, grown his work. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen. We often live uh, like the increase depends on us. We pray as a, a duty rather than a, as a necessity. We fret when the methods we employ do not produce the results we expect. The results we seek uh, can become our idols. Hmm. I thought of that. Let us, like Slesser, seize the promises of God and say, Christ sent me to preach the gospel, and he will look after the results. Amen. So that is about Mary Slesser. And now we got the personal reflection questions here. So the first one says, How do my prayers reflect my reliance on God for results? Hmm. Good question. Next one says, Am I willing to serve without seeing the spiritual fruit I desire? And then finally, have results become an idol in my life? How can I tell if I am laboring for results rather than faithfully serving for God's approval? Hmm, good question. <clears throat> so, not laboring for results, but uh, faithfully serving God for God's approval, because God gives the increase, amen? Or just to water and plant, amen? Or plant and water, I should say. And then, so now we have the further reading, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then this book by Bruce uh, McLennan, uh, Mary Slesser, A Life on the Altar for God, uh, Greenies House, UK, Christian uh, Focus, 2014. So that is the end of the um, daring devotion for today about Mary Slesser. So I encourage you to look more on her. And there is also a... Uh, Torchlighter's uh, movie about her. Those little animated movies that they have. Uh, a lot of them. So one made about her too. So check that out. And many books about her. So amen. Alright. Okay. So now it's time to get into the hymn. And let me grab this here. Alright. So this hymn today is titled... Uh, ye saints with deep attention see, and this is hymn 261 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, another one about the Passion of Christ and a spiritual song, and this is written by 
Benjamin uh, Bedome, B-E-D-D-O-M-E, who lived from 1717 to 1795, and then George F. Handel, uh, 1685 to 1759, and then this is from the Baptist Church Hymnal, 1900. So I'll press play and let you listen to the instrumental and see if this is an easy one to sing along with. All right. All right, I'll try it. See how it goes. <clears throat> with deep attention C and I'll give you the references really quick no story with this one so let's see stanza 1 we have Luke 9:22 and then Luke 22:44 and stanza 2 we have John 19:34 and Luke 19:10 uh, and then stanza 3 is uh, Philippians 2:6 and Isaiah 53:10 and then stanza 4 is 1 Peter 2:24 and Hebrews 12:2 Amen. The author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's the hymn. I'll go ahead and do the scripture songs again, and then we'll wrap it up for today. So, praise the Lord. More good devotions today. So we'll do yesterday's uh, um, scripture song, and then conclude with today's. If I can get this going here again. Turned off on me. Let's, hold on a second. There we go. All right. Psalms one hundred five, one through four. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory be in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him. Talk ye 
of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Glory ye in his na holy name. Glory ye in his holy name. Glory ye in his holy name. Glory ye in his holy name. Amen. All right, now today's Ephesians <clears throat> 6, 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. So let's stand, watch, and pray. Praise the Lord. All right. So that's the end of today's uh, broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the daring devotion and then the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 23rd and Psalms uh, chapter 40, verse 3. It says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist bread will be titled, uh, Let's Go for a Walk. Amen. <laughs> Sounds like a good title there. Let's Go for a Walk. And then the passage is Psalm uh, 119.97. So that'll be tomorrow's Baptist bread. And then tomorrow's daring devotional for the 23rd day is titled, Abiding in Christ, and this is about John McCarthy, missionary to China, 1839 to 1911. So this will be about him, John McCarthy, and then John 15, 4 through 8 is the passage. So abiding in Christ for the 23rd day tomorrow from the Daring Devotion book, and then tomorrow's hymn will be titled, Lo, He Suffers, Bleeds, and Dies. And this is hymn 262, another one of these Passion of Christ hymns. And this uh, hymn is by Benjamin Bedemy again, and then from a collection of church music. Amen. So we'll uh, find out about this hymn tomorrow. No story again for this one, but uh, we'll get into that tomorrow. And then if you want to get a copy of that, that's found on MelodyPublications.com. Amen. And then they also have... Um, the Daily Strength uh, Devotional Study Books. Uh, there's four volumes of those. I believe you can order those on that website also, along with some other uh, things. I think some CDs that they made, uh, instrumental. So check all that out at MelodyPublications.com. And then, of course, the Scripture Song Book and CDs are available online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website. And they're missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana, the Runyons. So pray for them and got some good news. Brother Dean said that it looks like they'll be able to stay in the jungle longer. Amen. Because it uh, looks like uh, 
team from the um, from here in America will be over there to be able to do surgery for him in a, uh, about a month or so from now. So pray for him and praise the Lord. That's a good answer to prayer. So amen. All right. So that's uh, their information. And then the Baptist Bread devotional book is available online to get a subscription going by going to www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then we got the Daring Devotion book. And this is uh, by M.R. Conrad, Daring Devotion, a mission devotional. So you can get that on the internet or perhaps at your local bookstore. And of course, as I stress as always, the first thing we need to be getting into right here is God's Holy Word, the King James Bible. So open it, study it, let it sink into your heart, and read it, and ponder on it. And uh, as uh, many of the men uh, during the Bible conference was Talking about beholding uh, different things in God's Word. When you see the word behold, it means to meditate on it, to think about it, and uh, let it sink into your heart and uh, really uh, dwell on it. So, amen. So, lots of those in the Bible. And check out that uh, series of messages from the Bible conference uh, last week. And I can't believe it uh, went by so quickly. And then, of course, today's sermons uh, from Brother Justin and Brother James. Uh, he did another one from Micah. And it was on inflation in the Bible, so check those out. Amen at www.jameswnox.org or, or the YouTube channel, which is James Knox Sermons. And check out the Micah series. Amen. All right, well, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Remember, only Jesus Christ can save your soul, so make sure you put your faith and trust in Him today. Amen. All right, bye-bye for now.